So, out there, there is a mirror, and unlike many mirrors, this one has a very unique property. If you look at it by itself, it looks like a normal hand mirror, especially gilded, surrounded by seashells, and kind of a golden tint to the mirror. Nothing too weird. But if you take this hand mirror and flip it to the other side, you realize that there is a second mirror. This side has a slightly silverish tint to it, and instead of being surrounded by seashells, it is surrounded by gilt golden filigree. So surely it must belong to someone important, or even a royal, right? Well, nobody truly knows where this mirror came from. Stories of its beginning go back a long, long ways, and one of the earliest stories of the image mirror is the one we'll be sharing tonight. The one about the Princess Bertha and her tutor. So Bertha was 16 during the time of the story. Her father was the king of the Lombards, Charles. And Charles at the time was just getting newly acquainted with his new wife. And Bertha was just one child amongst many. Um, her oldest brother was Charles the Younger, or I guess Charles Jr. if you prefer. Um, there was Pepin, he was 22 years old. He wasn't expected to amount to much, but one never knew. Then there was Rotrude, um, age 20, and already she was being eyed at by officials to be married off. Lothair, at the age of 17, um, he was actually part of a pair of twins. But his twin brother, Louis, actually died at birth. And of course, just below Gisela, or just a little younger, I guess, was Gisela at the age of 14, while her older sister, Bertha, was 16. So, during the events, uh, the king, Charles, hired a new tutor to, well, tutor Princess Bertha. Now, this tutor was an older gentleman. Um, he carried a cane and a sword with him, and he, he often walked with the air of nobility, although her father insisted that he wasn't actually a noble. So, as the tutor taught her many things, from writing to the history to the maths, um, one day he told her about the local legend, about the Mirror of Images. I actually have that mirror, the tutor told her. Oh, do you? She said. Can you show me what it does? Well, what this mirror does isn't so easily undone. And if I show it to you, you better be sure you know what you want to do with it. Bertha eagerly agreed, curious about this most strange mirror. So, the tutor removed it from his knapsack. It was covered with a cloth bag, and when she picked up the mirror, she lifted it up to her face, who tutored her standing behind the mirror, with the mirror looking at her own face. She enjoyed the way the gold made her look, and after a moment, she set it down. It's quite a pretty thing, she said. So, what does it do? And then the tutor explained. Well, what it does is it exchanges images, or I guess it'd be more accurate to say is it exchanges how people look at your images. That's why the mirror has two sides. So if you're looking at one side and I'm looking at the other, people will see you as me and they'll see me as you. The princess Bertha was confused by this. I don't, I don't quite get it, but you still look like you. So, her tutor no nodded and said, Let me show you then. Her tutor then took off most of his clothes and then screamed out to the guards. Guards! Guards! Help! I'm being hurt! So, the guards came rushing in, and seeing the, tu the tutor with most of his clothes ripped off, they grabbed the princess and harshly began to take her away. 
Hey, hey, don't take me away. Why are you doing this? And then the guards just gruffed at her as they carried her down to the dungeon. The tutor then realized that everyone saw him as the princess. And he realized just how much power this could be. He now that he could get close to the royal family. So the golden eyed tutor began to make his rounds. First, he approached the princess's brother, her Charles and Rotrude. Um, he left poison in their ales and as they drank it and their mouths began to foam, the physician was called in while the tutor simply snuck away. For Lothair, he wrote a fake love letter from a servant girl he had a crush on. It was real easy to convince Lothair to go to a private section of the castle, somewhere where he couldn't be seen by the others. Once, once the prince's head was broken and his neck snapped, he went on to Gisela. Gisela, the final princess, was one of the hardest. She was often looked over closely by her mother, and she was adored closely by her father. So what the tutor did was he took a snake from the royal herpetologist and then released it in front of the princess's horse while the horse was running around. Though everyone had seen the tutor do this, they saw the princess doing it instead. So with the horse spooked by the snake and rearing up, Gisela fell off the horse then promptly died. Pepin was sent off on mission at this time and sadly wasn't able to return. No one truly knows what happened that day. Some say that the tutor turned assassin was the one in charge. Some say it was the cruel hand of fate. Others say it was might have even been Charles the Younger or maybe Charles the Elder, Pepin's father. Whatever the case, everyone had just watched Bertha the princess slay her sister with the snake. So they began to make chase. The tutor ran to the dungeon where the princess was kept, careful to carry the reflecting mirror with him. When he found the princess, he lifted the mirror up to his face and made sure the princess was looking at the mirror too. Now with their images back where it belonged, the tutor called out to the guards, 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 the princess is here. And with the guards approaching the princess, they found her and they put her to the stake to burn. Charles, the, the king at the time was heartbroken watching his entire family be killed, not how trusting the tutor because he was too busy looking at his daughter Bertha at the stake. While Bertha cried out to her father, telling him that the assassin was just behind him, her father was too heartbroken by all the loss to listen. Even when the blade stabbed through his heart, he was still too heartbroken to notice. The tutor then escaped with the bloody blade in hand and the image mirror her in his sack. Now to the tutor, it was just him killing his boss. No big deal. Killing the family just makes sense. The thing is, someone doesn't really quite understand the impact of what they've done until it's already done. Charles would never have the time, the chance to earn the title great. His name would never be known throughout the world. His children would never go off to marry or conquer or unite other kingdoms. From killing one man and his family, this simple tutor with a simple magical mirror was able to kill off an entire family dynasty. And with that smoke, many other family dynasties went up with it. Entire families, entire nations, entire world ending empires all went up in smoke that night along with Bertha's corpse. 
Now did this golden eye tutor truly know what they did? Or were they just lucky? I don't know at this time. What we do know is that the image mirror still made its rounds. Long after Princess Bertha was dead, others would, would use the mirror. Sometimes they would use it to escape prisons. Sometimes they would use it to get into prisons, maybe to help someone or maybe to harm someone. It doesn't really matter. Sometimes the slaves would use it to make themselves royal. Sometimes the royals would use it to escape amongst the slaves. And most disturbingly is when the killers would use the mirror to escape amongst their victims. Some say that there was a, that the mirror now is kept by a killer. One who has been using the blade for years now. When they find their target, they kill them and then they switch images with them. So, when people find the body, they believe it was the body of the old killer. When in reality, the same killer has been going around, place to place, person to person, slaying new peoples every time and gaining new images. Now who is this person truly? I cannot say. What I do know for sure so they have bright golden eyes and a very nasty bloody blade. So if you find this mirror of images out there, be sure they don't use it against you. Because if they do, you never know who, what people will see you as. Thank you for listening to this Legends of the Image Mirror. I hope it is a fun one. And yes, I do expect this curio to return. Thank you, and you have a good rest of your night. And yes, of all the names I'm dropping down, I was supposed to hint that was Charlemagne around the year 995. Extra points if anyone can figure out the historical implications of it. Thank you once again, and have a good rest of your night.